Namaskaram. Namaskaram to everyone. <clears throat> this, uh, for many of you, this time, the virus time, the virus is becoming iconic, huh? <laughs> For an invisible thing, it's quite an achievement, becoming a star in the world. Terrible star, but star still. I don't think there's anybody in the world who is not taking their name at least once a day. So, these virus times, uh, you are forced into inactivity. Forced inactivity can feel like a prison or worse. This is because the nature of physicality, the nature of the material in the world is essentially dynamic. Whether you take an atom or a solar system or the universe, everything that's physical in nature is naturally dynamic, always in movement. Without movement, without dynamism, there is no physical. So the moment you're forced into inactivity, it feels like you're curbed, restricted, imprisoned or worse, it may feel death-like. Well, there is a way beyond this. There is dynamism of activity. The dynamism of activity, as all activity has has to have a beginning and an end. It's a limited process. Doesn't matter what is the nature of activity, either human or otherwise. Activity is always a limited process with a defined... within a defined amount of time and space. Right now, the defined amount of space is probably your home and it's feeling like a big restriction. But if, even if it was a planet or a solar system or a galaxy, as your capabilities to move extended itself, even a galaxy would feel like a restriction. This is the nature of activity. This is the nature of physical movement. For a... for a snail which is in the garden, this little garden is a cosmos maybe, because it takes from here to there, takes many, many days or maybe he will never make the journey. So, how much space is big? How much space is small? What is a restriction? What is not a restriction? All based on one's competence of movement and dynam dynamism. So right now, one must understand the dynamism of activity is a very limited process, no matter how capable you are.
But dynamism or the inertia which comes with restriction is feeling like a restriction and feeling like a suffocating process only because it has become stagnation. You are experiencing inactivity as stagnation. Inactivity that is induced, that has induced inertia because of this one feels stagnant. Stagnation will naturally lead to <laughs> death in a way. You may not die immediately, but in many ways you will die once you stagnate. So, there is a way to move inactivity into stillness and not stagnation. Stillness is super dynamic, but there is no activity. Stillness is the nature of the source. Activity is the nature of the surface. But the physical body, the nature of your mind, which is also physical in nature essentially, is designed for activity or that is how most people understand this. But what they're missing out is their activity on a daily basis is fueled by a few hours of stillness which they call as sleep. If that stillness was absent, this activity would fall apart in no time. The only problem with that stillness is, it is an unconscious lumber where you don't exist, you have no role to play. People say, I enjoy my sleep. Nobody can enjoy their sleep. You may enjoy the restfulness that sleep offers you. You may enjoy the rejuvenation that sleep offers you, but you cannot enjoy sleep. If you're enjoying it, you are just pretending to sleep. You're not really sleeping. So stillness is of another dimension of dynamism. Now, this dimension of dynamism needs an intensity. An intensity of life which one can never achieve through activity. Because if you reach a certain level of intensity in your activity, it will exhaust you. That is the nature of activity. However good the activity is, however pleasant it is, however pleasurable it is, every activity with a certain intensity will naturally exhaust you. you it will force you to go into the slumber of stillness. But to become still consciously means you're building a bridge between the physical and the non-physical dimensions of your existence. Everything that's physical, the galaxies, the stars, the moon, the sun, the planets, every atom is dynamic, including this physical body. If it attains to absolute inertia, that's called death. Or in other words, dynamism is the basis of physicality. Without that moment, there is no physical nature. It is just the whole process of what is the profoundness or wha how profound is one's experience of life and how precise and purposeful is the nature of one's activity. 
simply depends upon whether you have touched the core of your stillness or are you just on the surface of physical oscillations. Bringing this home to yourself is right now a good time because the virus, I couldn't do it. Now you're home, you can bring this dimension into your life that is a very intense way of existence but still. Right now the issue with most people is, if you ask them to be intense, they will become tense. So their idea of relaxation is usually to be lax. This is the essence of yoga, that is, you are intense and relaxed at the same time. Intention, your perception is seriously impaired. In laxity, you don't even have it. Because the essence of expanding one's life process, the basis of enhancing one's life process is only in enhancing one's perception. This can only happen when you're very intense and relaxed. Well, we can do a simple process to see how to go about this. Above all, once you know how to be very intense and still and relaxed at the same time, this compulsive or forced nature of always wanting to find a release or relaxation will recede in one's life. If you touch the still core within yourself, You will touch the original nature of your existence. When I say the original nature of your existence, everything here in this existence is still. Only small bits of creation, there may be billions of stars, but still it occupies less than one percent of the larger space in the existence. So largely, this emptiness is still. But now, slowly, modern science is trying to figure out that there is something very powerful happening in the stillness. That is so with the larger space, that is so with this, because they are not made differently. This small little life, and the whole cosmos, everything has been, uh, ha have been created with the same fundamental design, construction and sophistication of building is different from a single atom to the cosmos, but fundamentally the design is same. Today there is a branch of science which is developing, still many of them think it's controversial, but in the yogic culture forever we said anda pindanda, that means the way the atom is, that is the way the cosmos is. It is just the complexity and sophistication multiplies, but essentially it's the same thing. So this also has a surface which is subject to various physical realities, and this also has a core which is not su subject to any of those laws. The laws that govern, govern our physical self, you can clearly see, do not govern your mental scape. If... if it was so that the laws that govern your physical self also gov governs your mental scape, actually you would be very comfortable in your home. 
Right now the body is at home, the mind is all over the place, or so you think. So, you know clearly the laws that govern physical reality doesn't govern your mental space. The laws that govern your mental space does not govern the core of the life that you are. If you build a bridge between your physiology, your psychological space and the core of your existence, the still core of who you are, then you will see activity and inactivity are not very different for you. You can bring yourself to absolute stillness and be phenomenally dynamic, phenomenally dynamic because that is the most dynamic space in the existence is the non-physical dimension. So, how do I do this? We could uh, set up a simple process right now because uh, we have only forty minutes. I will just uh, kind of guide you through this in a couple of minutes, two to three minutes maybe. But when you do it by yourself, you must take either anywhere between twelve to twenty-one minutes to do it by yourself. But right now we will do it in three to four minutes time. You sit in such a way, if you can sit cross-legged it's fine, otherwise sit whichever way and sit with your spine erect, create a little bit of tension, little bit of tension right across the body from the top of your head down to your toes. Open your eyes fully, at least uh, create that kind of tension in your eyes like you're staring at something. And your breath also slightly exaggerated. Now slowly, just only the breath, relax it. Relax your eyes, still looking, but bring staring to gazing kind of relaxation. Then starting from the top of your head, moving very slowly, relax, very, very slowly. Let's say from the topmost point in your head, the top of your head, like in a radius of one centimeter at a time, relax like that and continue to extend it to two centimeters, three centimeters and let it spread slowly across the body. But don't change your posture. Your physical posture is still same. The posture that you are holding with a certain level of tension, slowly transform it into a very relaxed but still exactly same posture. Do not become like this. Still the same posture but just relax everything. If one cycle of moving from top of your head down to your toes doesn't relax you, Start again and again from the top of your head and bring it down. You can clearly notice whether relaxation is happen happening or not, depending upon how your breath functions and also the level of stress in your eyes because you're sitting without uh, blinking, if possible. If the lights are comfortable, you can sit without blinking, if the light is little sharp, you may blink once in a way, but that's okay, don't worry about those things. The important thing is, you create a posture that needs a certain amount of tension to hold, then 
slowly relax it. Start with the breath, move to the eyes, then move to the top of the head and down and again and again and again. Hold the same posture but in a very relaxed way. Please do this by yourself, uh, giving yourself anywhere between twelve to twenty-one minutes. The important aspect of this is, you must understand, when your activity and your life is related to the nature of activity you perform, physically, mentally, emotionally, and it's limited to that, you naturally become unknowingly, very prejudiced in terms of life. Prejudice means this, that unknowingly you have divided the world. First division happens me versus the cosmos. Then it feels very lonely, so me and my family versus the cosmos. Then that also feels terrible as you know right now in the lockdown, me, my friends and rest of the universe. That also doesn't feel good, then you say, me and my community and rest of the universe, me and my nation and rest of the universe. Like this we may expand boundaries, but the problem is just this. The moment you identify with the limited aspect of physical dynamism, you naturally become a prejudiced existence. If you build a bridge with the still core of who you are, you become an unprejudiced existence. And this is very important if you want to perceive life just the way it is.